this is not this is not just a play on word because the po- the Torah says it says in the pasuk zois ha odom zei ha Torah odom ki yomus ba'el zei ha Torah odom that odom is representing Torah and Torah represents odom. To understand Torah, you have to be an odom. And if you're an odom, you understand Torah. So it is clearly based on, on, on us and our own understanding. Except, of course, we have to understand, we have to, to understand Torah, there's one requirement. To open one's mind to understand with a living mind. This is all preliminary. It's not part of the talk, but nevertheless, these are very important things. Moshe, please find a place on the table, at the table. But are you sure? No, I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. Uh, sure. I confused you with the other singer, Tuchazon. <laughs> okay. You understand? I, they, they, they resemble each other. Okay. Um, we because of the heavy exposure that we all had to the intellectual quote-unquote process, the logical process, that prevails in the world. Are you understand every word I'm saying? What? Prevails? You understand what I'm saying? Process. What is process? Hmm? First, first, first word, process. 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 Ah, process. 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 Yeah. Method. Yeah. It's very important to understand the dramatic difference between the seichel, the intellect, that the Torah is talking to, and the intellect, the seichel, that the world is talking to. The intellect that the world is talking to is not really intellect. It's hands, except uh, the hands can't speak, so the mouth speaks. But essentially, everything just measured. How much is it weigh? How big is it? It's all, all on the tangible and physical level. The intellect that the Torah speaks to is an intellect that is based on life, on the Shom. The reason I understand this is not because I can touch it, but because I feel it. I understand I'm alive. This is a very, very important difference. So the Torah really speaks to the human being directly. Sometimes it seems to us, oh, I don't even begin to understand it. And the only reason for that is that we were trained to think not with our circle, but with our hands. <laughs> hands. By touch, by measure, by, by effect. Not with the circle, not with the, with, the, with the living circle that God gave us. Therefore, I'm saying, Torah speaks to the person. And a person can more directly understand Torah than anything else, except that I said he has to open up to the human element of the seichel, the human element. Then he will readily understand it. It says in today's Pasha, Eile Masib Israel, 
These are the journeys, you'll learn it, I'm sure, in the first Pasha. These are the journeys that Bnei Yisrael Atidim did. Ashiyotim Yetz Misraim, that they went and left Yetz Misraim. And then he goes on, Moshe wrote down all their, every, every step, all their, their journeys, where they, where they picked up from, where they dressed, and they left, and they, and they encamped again. Rashi comments on this, and he says, what is this about? So the Ratura Tanchume, and then there's that Ramesh uh, Darshan. But in principle, Rashi is saying a very interesting thing. He says, Mosho. This is like an analogy, analogous. It's a Mosho. It's compared to a father who went with his son to, a, to, to seek medical help. He was not well. He went to, to seek medical help. And on the way back, the father was reminiscing, reminiscing, was recalling all the steps and the, all the places that they passed by. He says, oh, over here, we slept over. Over here, we, 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 we felt cold. Over here, you felt a headache. They, they, you know, they, they remind themselves of this difficult journey that they went through. That's what Rashi says. So the Rebbe dives right into this Rashi and he opens it up and he shows it sounds everything very simple. But really, there are such subtle messages in here that we don't even we don't even recognize. Number one, the journey that Rashi is speaking about is a journey of the father returning back from the visit to the doctor. Right? Returning back from the visit to the doctor. The journey that the, that the Torah speaks about is not returning back. It's going to Etzisoyah. Leaving Mitzrayim and going. Where is it this returning back? How is this analogous? What is emotion? What? Yes, you can understand. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, you see. And then, interestingly, another points out that the father goes together with the son, and some of the experiences they both had together, like oh, here we slept, here we were cold, mm -hmm. and then some of the experiences are related just to the son. Here you had a headache, not we had a headache, like, like in the first two cases. The son had a headache. What is this about? And, and when, when, do, when do we include both of them? And when do we include only the son? And altogether, what is this kind of, what is this truth? The father with the son, the Eden were traveling from Israel, going to the desert. Going to Atsa Soil, where is, where is the tree with the father and the son? So the rabbi explains that this actually is explaining the, the, the trip of the Jewish people, the journey through the desert, and it also at the same time alludes, also is speaking about, in a, on a broader scale, the trip that every Yid, every Neshama, goes through in life. Very similar journeys. It's a prat. Huh? It's a prat. 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 It
Not a general statement? At first he speaks about it, specifically the journey from Mitzrayim. And then he speaks about, in general, all the journeys, every yid, every trip um, of life. Um, just as the journey that Eden went through coming out of Mitzrayim the, the, the trip was from Mitzrayim which was a golus a very heavy golus and they went through a desert Desert is not exactly a pleasant and a comfortable place. The, the journey through the desert is a motion, is analogous to a journey that a person that takes through, through life to a world that in itself is not suited for human life. And he has to transform it and make it, make it a human dwelling. It says in the title right in the beginning, I think I mentioned it here, even before, even before Mitzrayim, even before B'nai Yisrael, it says in the title when God created Odom Orishim, God created man, he said, I've, he said, I'm creating man who should rule the world. The world is a jungle. And in order that this jungle should have a human face, you have to have a human being. And it's the job of the human being to humanize the world, to transform the world from a jungle into a human dwelling. This includes the simple thing, you know, it should be livable, it should be taken care of, it should be clean and so forth. And of course, more importantly, it includes the, the general principle, what is human life? Human life is based on good and bad, not what is preferable, what I like and don't like. Not on tivus, but it's based on, on intellect. What is meaningful? Where is godly? That's human, that's a human life. This is the function of the human being. Human life is to be judged not by how much money he made, but how much wisdom he had acquired. And even more than that, how much wisdom did he impart to the world? How much light did he bring to the world? That's a human being. That's what the Torah says, that the human being is, has come to the world to rule and direct the world and bring light to the world. Especially the Jewish people, that's clearly this, this is their, their destiny. This is their job. Thus, in order, in order to bring light to the world, it is necessary to go down to the world. You can't bring light to the world and be away. Right now, we are all in yeshiva. We are in Gamaden. But this is all a preparation for our, for, for our job, eventually, to, to build a family and to bring light into the world. Then we have to go into the world and be there, and not be swayed, not be lost, but, but be influential. This is our job. So that if we reflect on this principle of going into the world, Going into the world means that you're going into a place, into a sick bed. 
the, the muscle of, of going to, for medicine. You're going to a sick bed because the world is a sick place in itself. But what is the purpose of that descent? And what ultimately do we accomplish? We accomplish, we, we, we cure it, we elevate it. We go there and we elevate it, and we cure the, that, and we cure, and we ourselves also acquire a, a benefit, a higher benefit for that. This is the general analogy of this, which the Rashi says that the, the, the father was now returning back, even though the Eden were now journeying into the desert. But the journey into the desert is, is like going back, because the whole purpose of the, going into the desert is in order to transform it, to elevate the desert and to elevate ourselves. So while we're going there, we actually, it's actually a returning trip. Now, more specifically, to understand this journey into the desert, this is something which is very simply realistic in every person's life. Just as when you come to learn something, you have to struggle to learn it. You don't know it before you learn it. And at first glance, oh, I can make sense of it. In other words, you're a stranger. It's dark. I don't understand. And then you struggle, and you struggle some more, and then all of a sudden it brightens up, and I do understand. This is a simple analogy of how life how life is experienced. Every person. Did you learn, did you re learn the Hayom Yom today? Mm -hmm. it was what? It was complicated? Mm -hmm. Who read the Hayom Yom? I didn't understand. You didn't understand? All right. I'll explain to you the Hayom Yom for today. I know the translation is very poor. And from the Hebrew, you wouldn't know that because there are so many quotes, you wouldn't know whether it's Masadic is quoting. The Hayom Yom simply says that a real Chosid will never ask a bracha for success in his Avedah. Excuse me? What you say, brother? A Chosid does not ask for a bracha, for a blessing, that he should be successful in his spiritual avoidance. Spiritual. The Chovna. Ask Rebbe or What? Ask Rebbe or Shem. Ask Rebbe. For, for success in his, uh, for a bracha. Yeah. Why? Because avoid the has to be accomplished through one's own struggle. Accomplished. Accomplished. I want to tell you an interesting thing I once read in years back. Totally a little bit outside of this, uh, outside, but nevertheless, there was a, a great sculptor, a world-class sculptor, Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. I'm sure all of you heard Michelangelo was a sculptor in Italy in the Middle Ages. He, he did sculpture of Moshe. Moshe, right. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Sorry? I didn't hear what you said. The horns. With the horns, yeah. In that case, he was like a, a, a world as a unique sculptor. He had a, a, a tremendous talent. He lived with it, you know, day and night, day and night, day and night living with it. No, not really. Italian. 
He I said know. that if you want to be a sculptor, you have to make your own chisel. What is chisel? Oh. If you don't, if you can't make your own chisel, you don't have a feel for the chisel. You're, you're, you're holding somebody else's chisel. It's not going to work. You have to feel like it's yours. You have to make, you have to make your own chisel. Mm. And everything in the world is a muscle for Avidus Hashem. Avidus Hashem, please understand, it's not enough at all to say, I understand what you said. And I can repeat it word for word, and I can even explain it. But, after all is said and done, the reason I believe it's true is because you told it to me. Then you haven't got to really touched the thing. You don't really know it, you don't really understand it. Many times I um, intentionally ask questions that are a little bit shocking because I want to have a personal reaction. Like I asked a question one time here not long ago. What would you think of the world if there were everything in the world just the way it is now, but there were no human beings? A world without human beings. No? Everything there, all the dogs, all the cats, all the rats, all the mice, all the birds, all the tigers and lions, everything in there. No humans. I'd like you to think, with your intelligence, what that world stands for. has to be something, this is, this is what's called intelligence. Hashem gave us intelligence to sense what is right and what is wrong, what is good, what is meaningful, what is meaningless. What has value, what has no value, what has a point, what has no point. And generally speaking, you know, an intelligent person will immediately say, you know, you know what's a point? No support, nothing to it. This means that you understand it yourself, not because it says something, not because Rabbi Till told you, but because your own intelligence relates to it and understands it. The same is true regarding Everything that we learn doesn't mean that overnight you'll understand everything. But particularly things that have to do with avoid. Things that have to do with avoid. Let's say avoid one. The first principle of avoid is is kabbalah soil. Can I say kabbalah soil? Oh, you know, you know kabbalah soil. Kabbalah soil. The first principle of avoid is kabbalah soil. The, the, um, the Weight Watchers, you know what Weight Watchers was? Uh, what? Weight Watchers. Yeah. Weight, Watchers. Yeah. weight Watchers is an organization that help you keep your weight down. Shouldn't become big. Huh? The owner is the CEO of Zurich. What? The CEO. Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> huh? All right, Weight Watchers. In other words, you have to watch your weight. And there is all kinds of rules what you're allowed to eat, what you're not allowed to eat. A whole, a whole Torah Shlema, you know. <laughs> the Talab, the Talesa says it, as S says it, all kinds of different things. And people really deprive themselves. Of, oh, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to touch this. I'm not going to eat this. Kabbalah Sayyid. 
Right? Really, Kabbalah said. Would you say that that Kabbalah soil and the Kabbalah soil of Avinus Hashem are the same thing? <coughs> hmm? It's not the same thing. Please explain. Say it much loud. What? Is it the same thing? It's not the same thing. What is the difference? Because Hashem is true, it's, uh, and this is it's, uh, only Because this is something based on your body, and that is based on your soul. Mm. Huh? One is physical, other one is spiritual. One is based on your soul, on your intellect, on your understanding the truth. And one is based on, on, on your body. Excuse me? And if it is based on your intellect, why do you need Kabbalah soil? You understand it. Why do you need Kabbalah soil? Why do you need to obey? I understand it. The, the, the answer is that you understand that the godly truth is impossible for human beings to understand. And therefore, you say the only way to really relate to Hashem is through Kabbalah say. Your understanding, your seichel, your intellect tells you that the only way to really relate to Hashem is through Kabbalah say. See, that's, that's the, 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 point, the point. So, if somebody tells you, do it because you're supposed to do it. I tell you to do it. Not, not, it's not accomplishing anything. You have to relate to it yourself. You have to understand. Listen. I want, I'm an Oyvet Hashem, I want to serve God. The only way to serve God is by the first, at least the first step, the first, uh, uh, the first approach is to accept what God told me to do. Afterwards, once I'm in, in the life, in the godly life, then I'm able to more understand and appreciate it and so forth. But the first step is, is to relate to it. This is what the Hayom Yom says. That Avedas Hashem has to be has to be with his own effort, with his own intellect, and his own decision. The person. You understand? Okay. So, the Nishama, or the human being, is put into the world. And in that, he is going to be facing many, many challenges because the world is like a desert. There are, there are scorpions, there are snakes, there are all kinds, of, all kinds of insects, all kinds of dangerous things. Of course, we're talking about spiritual things that are constantly um, uh, attacking the, 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 nisham, the person. And the only way for the person to make his way in the, in the world is he can't stay away because he has a job there. He has to go and, and, and build the world. He has to go there and face these scorpions and face the snakes and fight them off and transform them. In other words, one of these snakes and one of these scorpions, these are his own inclination, his own Yetzir Hara. He wants to do, he's inclined, he has enticement, he's drawn to do something which is negative. And he, with his own strength 
and recognition of, of, his, of his godly connection, says, no way will I go, am I going to do it because this is going to break my connection to Hashem. And I'm not going to allow myself to be broken away, to be taken, taken torn away from Hashem. This is, this is called avoid. And this is what Masadik says. When it comes to Avoida, he quotes from the Posik, Tihbad Hu Avoida on Hu Anoshi. Avoida cannot be easy. Avoida cannot be easy. It has to be COVID. It has to be hard. Not that it's a mitzvah to be hard. But when, you, when it's hard, that means that you're really fighting off Yitzhak if Hara. If it's not hard, that means that you're not really confronting, you're fooling yourself. Not really confronting Yitzhak Hara. I'll give you an example, which you probably all very easily understand. You wake up in the morning, and you say, Thank you, God, for returning my neshama to me. And by the way, when you say that, you realize, oh, I'm awake, and I have to get up, look over Hashem, to do away with Hashem. And then the Yeshua Hara comes and says, come on, go back to sleep. Don't bother yourself. It's, it's such, so comfortable. And then over there it's cold, it's hot, whatever it is. You can, you can sleep, it's sweet. Come on, come in with And then you say, on the one hand, said, no, but I have to do Avedis Hashem. I have to go down, I have to go to see this, I have to go to Mikra. Forget it, it's not so important. It's sleep. And then you find a compromise. And you say, you know what? If I get up, if I get up, my friends will think I'm a good boy. They will give me a pat in the back. They'll say, oh, look at him. Look how, look at, look at this real chassid over here. So you bypassed the avoid, you bypassed the, the, the bad. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you accomplished this thing, but you didn't really wage the battle. So you avoided the battle. And in that respect, you have not, you don't have the benefit of the avoid. Was the last part you don't have the benefit because you didn't the last part? But you don't have the benefit of the avoid element. Only because, because you you know you, you did it for ulterior reasons. Uh, so everyone's gonna yell at me. For COVID, everybody's gonna go yell at me, whatever it is. Can you imagine I want you, I want you to reflect. Think about this. Each one of us over here I don't know, I'm not sure, but about 20 years old, right? Close to 30. Huh? Close Some to 30. close to 30. A 20 year old man, by Toyota definition, is a man in the full sense of the word. That's what Toyota says. There's, you know, there is a three year old, then that you, have, that you start teaching him mitzvahs, seven, you go into Cheder, ten, and so forth, thirteen. You know, by commission, but 13 is by mitzvah, by swingers, and then 20. 20 is, by all, by all Torah definitions, this is the complete man. This is the man. Now, here is a, a man, in the full sense of the word, that's standing on his own feet, and he gets up in the morning because he's scared of Abelivsky. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Scared of Rabbi Lipster, you said? Yeah. Everybody's right, he's scared of Rabbi Lipster. I don't care what age. It really doesn't make any sense. And of course, I'm not saying that therefore you should go back to sleep. But I'm saying therefore you should, you should realize you're a man. What, what are you doing? 
Face yourself. Face life. What is the reality? Are you a Nebuchadnezzar Hashem? Are you a Yid? You know, consider... Oh, I'm sorry, I have to answer this. I'm sorry. Yes, Mandy, Mandy, what's the matter? This is important to reflect. And this is what the Yom Yom says. Don't look for easy ways. Avoid it has to be avoided, especially by the time you reach this adult level. As, as, you, can go through, as you go through life, the journey through the desert, as it described in, the, in today's Pasha. What does Ashi say? The father says to the son, here we slept, here we were called. In other words, the father follows the son wherever he goes. They go together. It is true that the son has been sent into the desert, to face, to face, you know, the challenges. And there are challenges. The, the challenge of getting up in the morning is a minor challenge. There are real challenges in life. Real, real initiations. Sometimes it's almost impossible to overcome the initiations. And you have to use every less koya to overcome. And the father is there together with the son. That's the important thing. All the koiches that he needs to overcome, it's not that he's given a heavy load and he's left on his own. He's given a heavy load and the father is constantly watching. Is it, you know, is he able to do it? And give him the support, give him the, the assistance that he should be able to do it. Um, un, um, un, unobserved, un, unawares. I don't know if you, you're familiar with this. Uh, one of the ways of, of raising children, small children, small children, it's important that they be left free. They should be free, they should be able to run un, uh, you know, without fear. That develops a character, develops a personality. But the kid can run, and he's not responsible. He can run into the street. He can run into the table. He can hurt himself. All kinds of different things. You know, a child, you can't really trust him. So what does a good teacher do or a mommy do? If the child is just about to run into the table, she stands right there. She doesn't tell him anything. Oh, wait, where are you going? She just stands there and automatically he turns away. You understand what I'm saying? He's just about to hit the table with his head, put his hand over there, and he hits his hand and nothing happens. What's the point? The point is that he gets the help, but he's not aware of it. This is the same in, in, in our lives. If we put our effort, the father and the rest of the time is, we both slept here, we both were cold here, the father was together with the son, the son wasn't aware that, that he was being really watched, but really he was watched very carefully. And in the long run, every one of us can point to hundreds of instances how he was watched how he was, he was diverted, he, he was safe from, from making a mistake. Yes, yes. 
Like, yeah. Like well, yes, yes. Well, it, it depends what. I you know some things which are not up to him understanding, and he doesn't have to feel anything. But the main thing is he's not restrained. This is, this is the uh, a way of giving him the sense that he is he can he's, he's, he can he doesn't have to worry about it. But eventually he gets the same. This is this is the way. This is what the father goes through the son. This father himself is taking his son into the desert, into the place where the Amnachoshim and Akrabim, where the scorpions and the, and the snakes are running around. And the son has to learn how to, how to maneuver himself around, it. how to avoid pitfalls. You understand? These are all allegories. To how to manu- maneuver himself around the world and to find the mitzvahs, to find the, the good, and to avoid the bad. And, but, the, but the chance of failing is all the time there. And then, has to show me, if a person fails, he catches himself. And he, can, and, and, and he can elevate himself even higher than if he had not failed. This is all part of the process of of Avaita. Now, within this process, this is the important thing. There are two types of circumstances, two types of initiatives, two types of deserts. There's a desert that you, you have to go through it, but it's natural. Like I said, the father takes the son, like the Rebbe shall send the Shom into the world. Normal worldly circumstances, which are constantly presenting a person with Nisyanus, and he has to find his way to maneuver and to, and to direct his life. And as he said before, he's, he's always vulnerable, always at the threshold of making the wrong step. Always at the moment where, where he, he, oh, he can make a mistake. And then he says, oh, wait, I almost hit this. I almost got there. And the Rebbe helps him. And sometimes he hit the wrong, he, he has an accident. He did the wrong thing. If a person is a driver, and he, a, a driver will tell you, every driver will tell you, that he has hundreds of instances where I almost had an accident. Mm-hmm. There is a right? Almost an accident. And sometimes you have an accident. But Baruch Hashem, it's not a very serious one. But if, if you have this minor accident, that gives you a much better understanding of what an accident is. And then you are much, have a much better chance not to ever to have a one. So this is part of the training, part of part of life. Then there is another type of set, set of circumstances. This is very important to understand. The set of circumstances where a person got lost in the desert on his own. He wasn't sent here. He was sent to be amongst human beings, to stay in society. Within that itself, he has plenty of, of challenges. He said, no, I want to go off my own. And he gets himself into the real, into the real core of, of danger. Nobody sent him there. This is what's called, this is the anal- analogy for if somebody has to show them actually went off the path. Went off the path. He actually went off the path and he actually made a mistake. Took a wrong turn. So you would think that at that point that's for no purpose at all. But that's his own. You know, that which is which the which the Rebus Hashem sent him to this is for the purpose of him accomplishing his his path. But if he took the wrong turn, he made an avera, 
He went ahead, he went in the wrong path. That's his own. He's on his own then. So this is what Rashi says. Here we slept, which means the father and the son slept together. This is when the father himself took the son. Here we were called, the father was together with the son. Here you had a headache, which means you went on on your own. On your own. You separated, you broke away from me. You said, you don't need my help. You, I want to try something else. So you would think that then, therefore, this is, has no, no purpose. Rashi says, even then, the father goes back with him, and he, and he says to him, this is, this is also for the purpose of your, of your elevation. Even if, if one strays on his own, that also has ultimately a purpose. That also will ultimately bring a good, a good result. Well, the father is talking to him. Right. Right? He's back with him. The father is talking to him. What if he never comes back? I'm sorry? What if he never comes back? No such thing. <laughs> no, does not even... The father goes looking for him, and he finds him. How many proofs do we need for that? Each one of us is a proof of that, a living proof of that. The point which I would like that we should understand, like I started saying before, there is a part of the Father which means there is a godly neshama, a godly intelligence within each one of us. This godly intelligence is way beyond anything that we can understand on our own. This is something which we understand because there is a spark of God in us. That's why it makes sense. Not because of our own physical experiences. The, the, the difficulty that we have, this is important to understand, the difficulty that we have is that we, the, it, right there is the real challenge. Because the Yetzirah, the world, comes and says, what are you talking about? This is imaginary things. This is not this is not real world. We're imagining something spiritual. And here is where the real challenge is to understand that that which we understand as a result of the godly blessing, the godly gift of our intelligence is real. This is where we get our real assistance. This is when Hashem himself says to you. Here is where you made a mistake. You had a headache. <laughs> and now you recuperate it. In other words, under all circumstances, even in the case where one actually strayed off and he got a headache, there is still this, the, so to speak, the, the godly spark, the godly inspiration in him that reminds him of, the, of, 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 of his godly connection and enables him to 
to rise out of that and to come and to begin to face up to the truth that he himself really recognizes. This is what we started off in the beginning today to understand that, that we are blessed with a godly blessing of intelligence. Of, of, of the finest and highest type of sensitivity. And it is, the challenge that we face is both, number one, to learn Torah to the point where we really get to understand it, where it really makes sense to us. And then the next step is to follow through on it and not to be scared of the world and say, hey, this you coming from, from a different world. But to give you a simple illustration, which each one of you probably in your own experience have, have plenty of experience of, of examples. I just want to have a topic of discussion. The Eden, I'm not talking about Russia, I'm talking about America, which is the most normal country we know. <laughs> and in America, there was a time where, where um, i.e., the Shema Shabbos, Shema Shabbos couldn't make fun of Not that there was any, any restriction as to what kind of job he can get. He can go any place he wants. But he, he couldn't get a job because he needed to work on Shabbos. His boss would say, if you don't come on Shabbos, don't bother coming the next week. This was going on regularly. Still going on. Huh? Still going on. No. Huh? It's hard for some people to get jobs. Yeah, some, but, if it's, but it's not impossible to have a job without keeping it without on Shabbos. Hard, yes. No, that's it. I, I, I used to work in computers. And I worked for a company called TWA. I don't know if you remember, there was a big yeah. airline company. TWA, and I was sitting at my desk Friday afternoon, and my manager can say, Ah, but you're still here. What are you doing here? Get out. <laughs> so, uh, no, that's not a problem anymore. <laughs> but in those days, this was a problem. And people couldn't, couldn't make panosa. And the people on the side, the Goyim Lahavim, would laugh at them. Which world are you in? Shabbos, what's the difference? You have to make a living, right? So, in the context of the, of the, of the world, they are right. In the world, you have to make a living. But you also have to live. And if you're Mahal Shabbos, you, have, you make a living, but you don't live. So these are the kind of challenges that even after you recognize the truth and everything else, you have to be able to stand up and say, this is the truth on the practical level, all the way down to the actual action, to deed, not just theoretical. And thus, Moshe Rabbeinu goes through and, in, and he recounts 42 different journeys. You know, 42, there are 42 Masoyas in, in this one. 42 different journeys, different steps. One of, there's a Kabbalah from Baal Shem Tev. Baal Shem Tev says, at every year that you saw that, every year from the date of birth till the end of his life, goes through 42 journeys. Until he reaches the highest point of going into Eretz Yisrael. Mm -hmm. huh? Uh, in Eretz Yisrael. That's the, that's, these are the 42 Masoyas that will lead you into Eretz Yisrael. Huh? Is that afterlife? Eretz Yisrael? No, Eretz Yisrael is not afterlife. Eretz Yisrael means, means the way to Hashem in the purest way. In other words, all of these steps and all of these challenges, really, they lead the person higher and higher. The only way that it's possible for him to fail is if he 
recognizes the argument of the Yitzhah that he is never going to make it. But if he does not fall for that, if he insists that he is going to make it, then he is going to make it. You learn in the Rashi where um, uh, when the Eden went to fight the Midianim two weeks ago and Bilam came to greet them. I don't know if you learned this. When Eden went, they went to fight the Midianim, 12,000 men, 1,000 from each tribe. They went to fight the Midianim. And Bilam came to face them and says, what? With 12,000 men, you're going to fight them? Forget it. So, they, they, um, what did they do? They killed him. They advised him. They are good wisher. Because he's the one who instigated the whole trouble. And they went and they had a, a wage war. And not one of the 12,000 men, not one, was hurt. But even, and this, is, this is the avoid that we have required. We have to be resolved and know that we are, going, we, are, we are on a journey and it's going to be difficult and we are all going to make it. And the most important thing is that we have to know that we have a godly gift of, of intellect. And Kabbalah soil means that we know what we're doing. Not Kabbalah soil, we're just blank and we don't know what we're doing. But we understand. This is not, we're not um, weight watchers. We are, we are with the Hashem. You understand? Huh? That's right, it's connected to Hashem. We have, and as always, I want to wish all of us much success in this journey. We should go from step to step, from strength to strength, like the Rebbe says, each one, and the most important principle is never, never to accept the argument coming from inside or from outside that you're never going to make it. What? Either, either your own Yetzirahara or someone outside, that a good friend tells you, come on, don't work so hard, leave it. <laughs> we also have to be careful about the Hainara. About what? About the Hainara. Hainara. That's another discussion. Stay out of it. Okay, well. What is it? Yeah. Majat Slocha, Suresh Davis. Thank you, Rabbi. All the best.